I know you're gonna dig this. My name is David Webb. I'm the president and CEO of the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center on location in Columbus, Ohio with a special gem of a funk star legend. Tell everybody your name and what group did you play for? Hello everybody. My name is Michael Beard. I play drums for the Barquets uh, from 1974 to 1985. Uh, it was truly an experience and uh, one I will never forget, both uh, professionally and personally. Um, but let me take you back. Yeah, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back from, from kindergarten <laughs> and work our way through from elementary to middle school to high school. And how'd you get into this music industry? Okay, so my family, uh, I have two older sisters and my dad, uh, he was a singer. Uh, my sisters, both uh, musicians like myself, but they both sang as well. Uh, my eldest, uh, Vicki, she uh, was the music uh, director at Franklin uh, Middle School, mm -hmm. which fed into East High School, the, the school that I graduated from, high school. The Tigers, huh? The Tigers, <laughs> okay. okay. Right. Tiger for life. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. It's okay. Okay. So, uh, Back when I was uh, probably four, maybe five, my dad took me downtown uh, for some parade. I forget what it was. Mm -hmm. But East High School was the band. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, okay, here they come. And when I saw the drummers, mm -hmm. and they were turning their drums behind their back and flipping them up, pop, and I'm thinking, Dad, I want to do that right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, want, I want to do that. I uh -huh. want to be that. Uh -huh. yeah, okay, uh -huh. son. Okay. Uh -huh. So, it started with two knives. Okay. And uh, I would be playing on the back of what was my high chair, but they kept it around. So, I'm playing on, you know, the seat and then the back, and I'm using knives. And my dad is like, you're tearing up my chair. Let me get you a practice pad. And yeah, okay, if you really want to play, then let me, you get private lessons, like your sisters. And I'm like, okay. okay. One played clarinet, one played flute. So there was always music in the house. Sure. Okay. Um, so I got my practice pad, uh, started taking private lessons. Okay. You know, so I could learn my rudiments, learn how to read music, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And after that, then I got my first snare okay and I was so amazed mm -hmm. ah you know it's like okay I got a snare mm -hmm. okay next I need a drum set mm -hmm. so you know by junior high mm -hmm. uh, I had my first uh, drum set orange sparkle <laughs> one tom tom two floor tom toms oh. cymbal <laughs> <laughs> I'm like oh, I'm going crazy I would practice every day where did, where, where did your dad buy that Drum set from? Oh, uh, Coil Music. Coil. They're now closed. Uh -huh. That's where I took my private license okay. on West Broad Street on the hilltop. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they were probably an hour, you know, or maybe not an hour. It was probably 30 minutes for like two or three dollars. Okay. But dad was determined that, you know, if you're going to learn, you learn the right way. Sure. You know, so fast forward, you know, I'm in junior high school. And you know, you made the band, you made the orchestra, mm -hmm. um, you made the pet band. You know, so right, you could right. go to all the games. Right. Uh, the only issue I had, you, you 
have to remember this is in the 60s, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to play timpani really bad, right. really bad. And it was a white guy, same age, I'm better than him, right. but he got to play timpani, you know. I'm, you know, I. You little, 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 little mad there, huh? Yeah, I, okay. didn't, I didn't take that very well, but mm -hmm. you know, hey, it's okay, it's okay. And then maybe a year later, you know, I'm in the band, and I see him. He went to West okay. High School. I went to East. So I'm hanging out, and I'm like, wait a minute, you're playing a trumpet. And you don't even have a mouthpiece. You're just out there marching. You're not even playing drums. Okay, so that was even more motivation. Right. You know what I mean? So, by the time I got to high school, now you have to understand back in the late 60s, mm -hmm. you know, you're dealing with Martin Luther King. Yes. You know, that civil unrest. Right. It's just like we're dealing with now. Okay. Um, I went from Hiltonia Junior High School, which was predominantly white, it was probably 70-30. Okay. And I said to myself, you know, if I go to West High School, you know, and you're getting called uh, an Oreo because you have more white friends than black friends, you blah, 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 you know, it's like, okay, wait a minute, I don't need this. Right. Let me go to East High School. It's all black. You know, maybe there's like two, maybe three <laughs> Caucasians. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would blend right in. Uh, not knowing that that whole summer, if I wanted to make the marching band, mm -hmm. you know, you, you practice, you know, right. four days a week in the hot summer. And this was before Ameriflora came to Franklin Park. So we would just march across the street, take up space in Franklin Park where you right. could run laps, where you, you know, you, you learn your craft and you, right. you really want to do this. Right. And it came down to uh, who was going to play snare. Mm -hmm. And I refused to play bass drum. I'm not playing tenor. Not that there's anything wrong because, right. you know, back in the day, you got just as much cred, you know, yeah, for playing yeah. bass drum because, you know, they're okay. flipping yeah, and the turning thing. and, you know, chopper, you know, he would throw his bass drum down and get the tap dancing on it, you know, during halftime, you right. know, people came to the football games to see the bank. Right. Not necessarily the football because <laughs> we'd always lose. Right, <laughs> anyway. Right. right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, it was down to, okay, it was me and Ron Nickerson. I don't know where he is today. Okay. But, you know, it was like nip and tuck as to who would be playing that snare drum. And the decision was made that you both are good enough. Unfortunately, we have four white snares, but we have six snare drummers. Mm -hmm. So if you all don't mind, uh, play these black snare drums. Mm -hmm. And they were twice as deep, so it was way right. harder to try to flip them and, you right. know, do the things, right. you know. So it's like, well, okay, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And our band director, who is uh, deceased, uh, Dr. Willie Sullivan, Mm -hmm. uh, he was from Florida A&M. Okay. So he brought all of Florida's patterns and 430 steps a minute and, you know, the death march, you know, marching onto the field. I'm telling you, people came to see the band, yeah. you know. And I would always have to leave because at that time, uh, I had started playing in a, uh, a band called Blind Justice. Blind Justice. And each of those cats, except for Benny, bless his heart, he walked off after one gig. I think uh, he had a bad acid trip, to be honest with you. Oh, wow. uh, and he was never heard from again. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the cats, uh, Melvin Stewart, he went to Undisputed Truth. Lamoris Payne, he went to uh, Rick James, Stone City Band. I went to the Barcays, reached back and got Frankie J so we could have a trombone player. Tell people a little bit about Frankie J, but not, not go back to your story so people know who Frankie J is. His Frank, real name. Frankie Jeff Franklin <laughs> Franklin Chester Thompson. Okay. <laughs> That's his real name, but everybody called him Chester. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just say they Chester the molester, even though he never, <laughs> never molested anybody. It's just a nickname. On record. A nickname. Yeah. That was just a nickname, you know. <laughs> they called me Yam. My girlfriend at the time was Ada. Okay, Ada Potato. This is high school. Right. Ada Potato. Well, 
Your name must be Yam. Ha ha ha. Okay, there's probably four people today that will say Yam, and I'm like, okay, it's somebody <laughs> from high school. So, you know, yeah. oh man. But anyway, Blind Justice. Mm -hmm. uh, Craig, he still plays. He does cruise ships. Mm -hmm. The guitar player, Craig Moreland. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay Harmon, he put out his own albums. He, you know, he was married back in the day when we was in high school. Uh, he was already married and had children, so he okay. didn't get a chance to go on the road. Okay. But everybody else, you know, Frankie J, you know, he left high school thinking he was going to go someplace, and you know, he was playing locally. Uh, I had left the summer of 74. The bar case heard me, that, I'll get to that story, but the bar case heard me and they wanted a trombone player. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, oh, I know Frankie J. You know, Frank. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we'll fly him down and give him, you know, give him a tryout. That's all it needed. Well, let's be, before he was we, that good. Yeah, before we go, let's go back just for a second. We're still where you are. Let's say the, the how many drummers they have for the bar case before they got to you. The original drummer, he got, and then the next drummer, then then you. So can you remember the uh, the original drummer's name, and and then the next drummer, uh, then how you got? Because let's, let's just get that pattern so people understand how um, you fit into the Barquet's mode of uh, being a drummer. Okay, so uh, the original drummer died in the plane crash. Yes, so this Ratty, mm -hmm. James. Uh, stay behind with the equipment so he rode uh, in the truck okay. basically mm -hmm. uh, Ben went down in the Ben the trumpet player Ben calling mm -hmm. uh, he was in the plane he was the only survivor uh, out of that plane crash and I don't know how long he tread water but they found it okay okay so uh, then they had whoa Willie Hall Willie Hall he played uh, behind uh, Isaac Hayes. Okay. So you shaft. Okay. Right. Uh, after Willie, there was probably another drummer, I don't know his name, mm -hmm. and then Lloyd Smith, the guitar player for the Bar Case. Mm -hmm. His brother mm -hmm. was playing drums at the time I'm in high school. Right. So here's the story of how I got to the Bar Case. All right, so once again, super group, the name of the group was Blind Justice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I had got into some high school trouble, and uh, my father was very strict. So for a time, he wouldn't let me play. And I'm like, Dad, this is my livelihood. Hold mm -hmm. up, man. You mm -hmm. can't hold oh, I need to play. Mm -hmm. So. At the time, uh, I had joined another group uh, called the Crowd Pleasers. Yes. And yes. at that time, you know, they had two white guys that played trumpets. I'm still in touch with one of them. His name is Ed Morrison. He still plays trumpet. And the Crowd Pleasers, where are they from? Crowd Pleasers were from Columbus. Oh, Columbus, Ohio. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and Skip Anderson, who played keyboards for the Crowd Pleasers, he went on to play keyboards for Luther Vandross. Okay. okay. All right. So, the Barkeys were in town. We were the opening act. Great. So it's okay. It was super group, you know, horns, rhythm section. So you know, we would do a lot of Chicago Tower of Power. Uh, uh, any lot, horn. A lot of cover. You know, a lot of covers. Right? Yeah. Okay. Covers. Mm -hmm. So. We were opening up for them, and like I had mentioned, Tony Palmore was a guitar player, and he said, Mike, you know, he's like my cousin. Mm -hmm. He said, Mike, you know, the, the Barquets are looking for drummers. I'm like, oh, okay. We're opening up for them. Okay, I, okay. So, you know, we did the show. The last song we did was Squid Cakes by Tower of Power. Mm -hmm. We did the whole thing. Got a standing ovation. They wanted us to come back out and to start up and do it again. Mm -hmm. You know, it mm -hmm. was that it was that tight. Okay, we were that tight at the time. Mm -hmm. So, I had walked off stage, and I'm like, okay, so anybody that doesn't look like they're from Columbus, basically, you know, let me just say, well, my name is Michael Beard. You know, you hear me. You know, if you if you like what you hear, you know, give me a shout. And I had 
said this to, unbeknownst to me, he was the bus driver for the Barcays. So, you know, I'm seeing him whisper backstage, you know, off to the side of the stage as they're watching. You know, I came off the stage. Your name is Michael Weird? Okay. Uh, we need you. We need you now. Okay, and this is probably a month before high school graduation. We need you now. We need you to come now. And I'm like, dude, I've already told my parents that I do not want to go to college. Please don't waste your money. I want to be a professional drummer. So, you know, when this happened, it's like if you can just wait until I graduate so I at least have one piece of paper. One. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, they waited. I didn't have my driver's license. My sister said, come on, you can get your driver's license. You need some kind of ID before you move to Memphis. Yeah, it's too far. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. She taught me how to drive in a day. Wow. How to park in a day. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. sister, Leslie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> got my driver's license. Okay, got my plane ticket. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is all for the tryout. I hadn't made the group yet, but I knew they wanted me. Yes. This is back in the day when the airline still had the roll-up wheels, you know, not the little skywalk, jet walk thing you could walk down. You had to walk out and yeah, walk, walk, you up, had to, walk, you had to walk up. Walk up. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I'm late getting ready to miss my flight. They had already started to roll this back. Mm -hmm. And I begged and pleaded with the ticket agent. I said, I can remember this distinctly. I'm like, you're getting ready to change my life if you don't let me get on this flight. This is so important. And he looked and he must have saw the sincerity in, you know, in my eyes. And they rolled that back up and let me on that plane. Mm -hmm. Trust me, the rest is history yes, about that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Got down there. The most important thing to the Barcays at the time was, can you keep time? Is your, is your foot just as strong as your left hand? Right. Okay, and they were, you know, they wanted a strong 2-4. Well, mm -hmm. Okay, a 2-4, that's basic funk. Mm -hmm. Come mm -hmm. on, man, who doesn't do that? Boom! Ah! And, you know, most guys, you know, they play um, flat-footed, right. what I call flat-footed, mm -hmm. uh, where they just work their ankle. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm playing up on my toes where I could, when you hit that one, you mean it. One, two, three, four, you know. Uh, yes. And you just keep that steady. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I knew I was good at that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I got down there. Okay, yeah, you got the gig. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need you back so we can rehearse. They were big on rehearsing because, you know, our stage show uh, was so intense, high energy, that, right. you know, you rehearse for weeks. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, to get it right. Mm -hmm. You know, I could go home and play the the entire set by myself just from memory mm -hmm. and that's how I would practice once I got to Memphis right you know TV stopped at 12 no 11 o'clock do you know where your kids are and then you know <laughs> there's no cable yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know three I channels to, three channels three right? channels you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> I mean we didn't even have Fox <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, go ahead. Ask, ask, a, question. ask a question. No, no, no. You were, you were fine. You're fine. So let's, let's, let's go back. So you're practicing with the Barcays, mm -hmm. working real hard with them and stuff. Here. So the energy was there. You was there with them and stuff. I mean, so when did they? When did you feel you was a part of Barcays? I guess. Uh The first recording, my first recording, and we were still uh, at Stax Records. This is before Stax closed, mm -hmm. and we recorded Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And I brought my massive set with me. You know, eight tom toms. You know, I had one bass drum at the time. And if you go back and listen to the intro. I hit every time. It was important. Okay, mm -hmm. I may not get to record with this many drums ever again. Mm -hmm. They want you to have two tom toms, maybe a floor. Your snare drum is tuned solo. It, it sounds like you're playing a tom tom with a snare at the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. It was so deep, you know. Mm -hmm. But that was the sound, you know, for R and B back in the time, yeah. back in the day, you know. So I just made sure. Do 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 do. Pow. 
Oh, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm there. Is the tempo good? Is the tempo good? Yeah, the tempo's good. We can overdub everything else. I'm like, oh, okay. Is the bass and the drums tight? Yeah, okay. Well, so then we good. It was at that moment. It's like, okay, this is going to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, not knowing that, you know, Stax is going to close. We're going to have to go through a tryout period before Mercury signed us. Mm -hmm. You know, we played at the same club for maybe a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, let, let me ask you this real So, on Holy Ghost, who played the Ten Bodies? Did you play the Ten Bodies? I, play, I played all percussion. Yeah, because we want to know that because oh, that's that, we want to know that because that Ten Body part was the was the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know, see, we, 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 we got to remember that. That's right. The, yeah, right. so uh, we want to know in the studio you played the, that. So, what did you what brought you to play the Ten Bodies on that Holy Ghost? Well, uh, we were looking for. You know, it's, it was the extended version. Mm -hmm. So we were looking for something, and I remember Diamond from the Ohio Players. He played Tim Bollies on the yeah. Playing Tim mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, oh, I like the way he's doing what he's doing. Okay, yeah, okay, I'll play Tim Bollies. Can I have three? No, we only have two. Okay, well, I'll make these two, I'll make them work. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple, because, I, you know, I'm getting ready to. Tear basically play everything I've learned yeah, from marching band, from marching band, yes. marching band you know, cadence. Rudimental, like yes. Yeah, yeah. No, keep it simple. You know, stay on one drum for a minute, then go to the other one. Then you, yes, you can go back and forth, you know, it's okay. So I'm like, all right, run it. No, no, keep it simple. I'm like, ah. Okay, run it again. No, cut. Keep it simple. Okay, give me a minute. Yeah, that's what we want. That's what we want. Play just like that. I'm thinking. Ah, okay. They were right. As it turned out, yes, you yeah. know, they were right. You know, to this day, if you're ever in D.C. On a Sunday, there's a station, I forget the, the call letters, but they'll play the drum solo, the timbali solo in Holy Ghost. That's mm -hmm. part of the mix for that DJ. And I'm like, wow. I know everybody was, when, it, when you played it, everybody just started running to you on that. <laughs> it was like the legendary person on uh, it. You know, and what's funny is when we finally ended up playing it on stage, you know, we had to hire. Uh, we had two backup singers. Mm -hmm. uh, Sherman Guy is the guy that I'm speaking about. He played uh, he played the timbali solo, and I'm like, "You're not doing it right." But you know, I'm in the middle of keeping everybody in check, everybody right. in tempo. You know, it's like, ah, okay, all right, all right. So you know, he got shined then, but it's like, okay, so if you really know, <laughs> you know, it's me. You Thank know what you. I mean? Yeah. So all right. Okay, so, fine. so now we know. So okay, so stack records. So they they folded. Yes. So how did y'all get the call to uh, Polygram Mercury Records? We were shopping ourselves, um, and you know the the representative from the company, you know, came down, and we were uh, doing our show. And at the time, they had already cut. Uh, Son of Shaft, but we would incorporate Shaft uh, in our in our set. Mm -hmm. So Shaft, Son of Shaft. I think we did. Uh, oh, ah, uh, um, oh, I can't think of his name. Oh, David Bowie, mm -hmm. uh, Fame. We did that as a cover tune. You know, mm -hmm. we the Barcades. We don't need to. You know, but the guy A and R guy came and heard us. It's like, okay, yeah, all right. We need to get these guys, mm -hmm. okay? But I do seriously have fond memories of Stack, you know, because of Holy Ghost. And once they folded, it never came out. So then we got to deal with Mercury, spent nine months in the studio, mm -hmm. eight hours a day, $135 an hour. This is back in the day. And, and what they, year was that? They, was that like 75, 76? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. mid-70s. Because I'm, I'm telling you, we played for a year, 
year and a half at some club, the same club, I can't remember the name of it, you know, but it was the same club, we did the same set, we didn't vary, and the club was always sold out every night, mm -hmm. you know, to hear the same music, mm -hmm. you know, dance to the same songs. It's like, well, okay. Anyway, once we got the stacks, Got off the plane, first person I met was Isaac Hayes. James, James and I lived together. He said, right. oh, let me take you by one of my friends. Now, James, so we don't know James, James Alexander. James Alexander. We just want to make sure James. James, okay, James the Alexander. original member of the barcade. James Alexander. James Alexander. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So he took, well, maybe run by one of my friends. I'm like, well, okay. You know, I hadn't, we hadn't got to the, our house yet. Okay. I didn't know it was Isaac Hayes until he opened the door. I'm like, man, that's Isaac Hayes. Are you kidding me? Oh, come on in. Man, this is our new drummer, Michael Weird. He's from Columbus. Oh, nice to meet you, Mike. You know, it sounds just like his South Park voice. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you there. Yeah. Uh, I'm chef? Like, wow. uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, really? Ah. The stories I could tell you, you know, but I'm trying to keep it PG. Well, well, you know, speaking, Isaac. Well, you know. speak your mind. Speak your mind. We knew there there had to be some some kind of stuff going on back then. You know, but we know, and it's 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 out in it's out in the open. And other, but you know, <laughs> you can speak how you feel. You know. Well, you know, I, some people who are deceased, and like my mom said, unless you were there, don't spread gossip. Unless you're there and you saw it for yourself, right. then don't speak about it. So mm -hmm. okay. It was interesting meeting Isaac. Mm -hmm. uh, he was he was one of the original freaks. Right. Let me, let me put it that way. Right. He, he liked to do certain things. Gotcha. Okay. I won't. That's. I'm gonna leave it right there. Okay. Okay. Anyway, you know, it's stack. So you know, he had a Stutz Bearcat, and I'm like, well, what's a Stutz Bearcat? I've never heard of that kind of car before. And then I saw it, and it was chocolate brown. It had mink for the floor. I'm like. What is this? It had gold knobs for the radio and the, the column, and it's, it was gold. I'm like, who does that? You know what I mean? It's back in the day. Elvis had too, because I saw Elvis right before he died. He was on his motorcycle. Here comes a motorcycle. Okay, we're on Elvis Presley Drive, but it wasn't that called that then. He sped past us, turned up in the grace, and I'm like, that was Elvis, really? Yeah. Okay, so he recorded his stacks as well as Sun. Well, see, a lot of people didn't know that. Okay, yeah. He mm -hmm. would record his stacks. He would buy out the whole studio, all three rooms. You couldn't come in. You could go on the parking lot. That's how I know he had two Stutz Bearcats. He had a black one and a white one. I'm thinking, okay, Elvis is recording. You can't go in. It's on lockdown. Oh, okay, Elvis is here. And when he gets ready to leave, you're going to have to leave the parking lot. Oh, okay, all right, no problem. Man, they folded. We got our deal with Mercury onward and upward. Let me just put it that way. Okay. Um, like I'm saying, it took us nine months to cut too hot to stop. Why we, so long? Why so long? We were basically writing material in the studio instead of... Just like the Ohio players did. They came with a groove and they just jammed in the studio and then put them, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, you know, and kind of put it together. You know, you're writing lyrics. Okay, you could do that at home. Take a copy of the, you know, take a copy of the tape. Do that at home. No, mm -hmm. we were doing it in the studio. So as the imp in, uh, inspiration struck, you could go right out there on the floor and put it down, mm -hmm. you know. There was always something going on, but, you know, eight months, nine months, you know, it's, it's a pregnancy, but the pregnancy turned out well. Was it very taxing on your mind? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, every day. You know, we don't have anything today. You know, there were times we'd be, you know, we'd be there eight hours and didn't come up with anything. You know, it's like, ah. Oh. How did the, the A&R people feel about that? When is the album coming? When is the album coming? When? Okay, we're coming down here to see what you got. You know, oh, okay, so you, we have these three. We're working on four more. Mm -hmm. Didn't have an idea of what we were trying to cut. We just had these four so far. Okay, so how many more months? Give us a couple. That went on twice. So we bought four months to come up with four songs. 
mm. it's a lot harder than you think. Okay. okay, coming up with a melody, did you an have, original melody. Did you all write together or someone stuck out and wrote? Because like some groups, like the Ohio Players, they all write and produce together. And other groups, did they put you all together as you're getting the credits or someone wrote it? Oh, yes. They put us together as, as the credit for the okay. credits. Uh, BMI, we all got paid. Uh, uh, the production company, we all got paid. Um, but think the band would come up with the tracks okay and then Harvey Henderson who played saxophone and Larry Dotson who was the lead singer they would go away with an idea you know well this is the song title now let's create something around this is what we want to say mm -hmm. and how you want to say it right you know back in the day if I remember correctly uh, we were the first black group to get that parental sticker guidance on an album. And what album was this? Uh, it wasn't Night Cruising. Uh, it could have been Flying High on Your Love. I'm not sure. But Tipper Gore, Vice President Al Gore, his wife, okay, because Vice President, he was a senator then. Mm -hmm. His wife was really strict. And I think it was, now that I'm thinking about it, because that was the second album that we uh, put out, mm -hmm. Flying High on Your Love. Mm -hmm. And at the time, Stax was trying to recoup whatever money they could get. So they released Holy Ghost. Okay. The same time. I remember that. You know. I remember that. It was double, it, like it was a double it, thing that came yeah, out at the same time. Yeah, double thing that came out. Yeah. And I'm like, man. And... Stax didn't belong to um, RIAA, so I, I couldn't get a gold album from that, you know what I mean, from Holy Ghost. And all the work that was put in, I can't get paid, they didn't belong to BMI, you know, ASCAP, I couldn't get paid. It's like, oh, this is like Motown all over again. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you know, we're on tour and had to incorporate because people wanted Holy Ghost. Back up for a second, when you said Motown. Now, did you do something with Motown too? No, or uh, you, Motown's not paying, not oh. belonging to, so you couldn't get a gold record. Got you, got you. you. You know, you you couldn't get things because they weren't at yeah. part. It of, was it was Barry Gordy's company. It was Barry Gordy's he, company. Got you. you know? Now we understand. Okay. it was a privately owned company. You're right, like got you. Stacks, you know, it was a privately owned company. You couldn't get. They didn't belong to certain. Unions where yes. you could get these, you know, your accolades, you know, sure, when you sure. so. I see. And I'm glad you said that because a lot of people don't know that the history of the music business, and we'll get deep into the music business. But go ahead. Well, I mean, you know, uh, where was I? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you said that you uh, the, the uh, senator's wife, Al Gore's wife, we gave you Tipper. Tipper Gore yeah, gave you uh, like one of those gave stamps, us, you know, parental guidance and. Uh, back in the day that killed your sale. Unlike today, it's you know, you're proud to have that. You know, that makes the children want to go listen like to your Like two live crew back then when they was doing it. It was like everybody had to go hear it. Right. You know what I mean? But back then, you know, books that cut your sales in half and it's like, man, okay, what are we gonna do now? Go on the road and promote. Right. You know, go on the road, do your thing, turn the place out as usual. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we said turn the place out. Oh yeah, standing yeah. on. Oh yeah, you know, back in the day when you know you had, we used to travel with a uh, pyrotech, licensed yeah. pyrotech, so we could have flames on the stage and explosions and you know all kind of lights and you know cam lights, camera action. You right. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, we were the guest stars, and then here come Parliament. You know. P Funk All Stars, but back then it was Parliament, Parliament Funkadelic, the Parlets. The, it was it, it was a whole show. Okay, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, when I had my own drum solo. The band left the stage. Mm -hmm. You know, I ended up with fire. I'm playing with fire, fire my fire sticks. You know, and then at the end of the solo, I would stand up and throw my sticks toward the front of the stage. We had a flash pot that would explode, so it's, it seemed like 
my drumsticks just blew up as soon as they left my hands and hit right. the stage. You right. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Unbeknownst, okay, I had somebody back here, you know, where I could go this way, drop my sticks, pick up uh, some of my mallets, you know, and they'd be on fire, hold them up so people could see, splash, hit some of, the, take some of the uh, accelerants mm -hmm. uh, off, hit the cymbals first, then go around your toms. It's going to look like everything is on fire. Uh -huh. End up with your snap, bah, 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 and the fire shooting up. Just throw your sticks out. Boom! Okay, you have two seconds. Count the next song. Platin, goosh, let's go. Okay, last song of the night. But people, I got a standing ovation every night. Okay, the drum solo was three sections. Mm -hmm. You know, get the people going. Keep it, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Keep it, because you know I'm trying to. My idol was Billy Cobham at the time. I'm trying to <laughs> one handed. <laughs> Okay, hold up. <laughs> right, right. Keep it simple. Right. Start with the drum beat. Engage the audience. Okay. Oh, the audience was into it. Okay, great. Now you can go into something a little more complicated, but you still keep the same beat so they can still bob their head to whatever you're doing. Bucky's black you know, just mm -hmm. keep it going, same, mm -hmm. same tempo. Mm -hmm. Okay, then give them something visual. Right. Here comes the fire sticks. Ah, yeah, get it. Bleesh. You know what I mean? Three parts. Keep it simple, and simple. Get a little busy in the middle. Mm -hmm. You'll get house. If you do everything you know, people will just be, oh, okay, well, that's nice. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Yeah. But I'm sitting instead of participating. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. Next question. Okay. Well, let's do this. Let's talk about the members in your band. You know, when I see up here with the cash box, let's start from the left all the way uh, to you know to your right to your this left one? to the bottom. No, the, the, this the, one. Yes, yes. That you. Uh, uh, can so I, so just you just you just, you just like turn you turn your okay. head kind of talk about it and you turn back to us and let us know what the, the first guy over that left. You know. Okay, top left, first yeah. guy. Yeah. That's James Alexander, mm -hmm. the original member. Okay. Tell me a little bit about James. Get a little about James. Uh, well, I don't know how old he is because <laughs> he was old when I got there. <laughs> okay, I'm a teenager. Uh -huh. <laughs> he was probably in his late 20s. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Still don't know to this day how old James is. Mm -hmm. Okay. But he's still playing. Yeah. All right. They yeah. still tour. Uh, next to him, is Sherman Guy. Sherman Guy. That's the Tim Bodley player that played my part that I recorded, you know, for Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. He was also a backup singer. Uh, he did, he sang the lead on Running In and Out of My Life. Okay. That was Sherman. Okay. Okay, next to him is Luscious Lloyd. Uh, he played guitar. Uh, now, I, now, I, now, I know James is uh, living, the, the rest of the guys you're living that you, uh, that you talk to? Uh, when we go when we go through the are they living or are they the, still the the three that I have mentioned so far they they uh, they all of us are alive uh, except for Frankie I'll get to him okay like the next guy over uh, his name is Mark Bynum but everybody calls him Bubba you know there's a Bubba in everybody's family or you yes. know that's Bubba Bubba okay, okay. Right. he played keyboard bass uh, to support James. And he also sang as well. He was one of the key background singers for us. Mm -hmm. um, that's me. I've always had on a headband. That's, that was your that was your signature. That was my signature. <laughs> I had, had on a headband. You know, five minutes after the show started, I'm sweating. So I never played with a shirt. Never played with a top. Okay. 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 So if you go, I'm just getting ready to go counterclockwise. The gentleman with the hat, with cowboy hat. The gentleman with the cowboy hat. That's Charles Allen. We called him Scoop. Uh, he's deceased. Okay. Uh, but he, yeah, he played trumpet and he was also a background singer. Uh, next to him is Winston Stewart. Mm -hmm. uh, he got out of uh, the bar case. He got out of that kind of uh, R&B funk music. Uh, he's the musical director at his church now. What church is that? Is that in Memphis? Yeah, that's in Memphis. Okay. Uh, 
the name of the church escapes me, but trust me, if I'm in Memphis, you know, and I have the Sunday off, I will go sit in, you know, it's that kind of a lively church. Okay. Okay. Next to him is uh, Larry Dotson. He's the lead singer. Mm -hmm. uh, he came from du du the Duprees because the Barquets originally uh, was just an instrumental group. Mm -hmm. um, uh, is, but they come to realize, okay, we need a lead singer, so they got Larry. Okay, next to Larry is Frankie J. Oh, Frankie J. just passed. Okay, but that was Frank Thompson. Okay, mm -hmm. next. Okay, next to Larry, mm -hmm. and then finally, that's Harvey Henderson. He played sax. Uh, no backgrounds. He just played sax, and he looked good. He was the one with the big white wig. Okay. Okay. If you okay. Remember back yeah. in the day. Yes. Okay. So that was the group that. Uh, did the most damage on the road. <laughs> uh, we had the most fun. Right, right. That tour with the, oh, you know, we used to, the drummers, we used to battle. Larry Blackman will not speak to me to this day because I got up in him every night. Okay, <laughs> trust me. He still always look at me and look right away. I, I don't know you. I'm thinking, Larry, dude, get over it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyway, uh, Dennis Chambers at the time mm -hmm. was playing drums for Parliament. Mm -hmm. So he had no beef with me because we were just as good. Right. You know, he, I'm standing back as they're on stage. You know, he would do a bad lick, mm -hmm. you know, and he's using him to his ten bodies. Please! And then turn around and look to see, as he's keeping time, turn uh -huh. around and look to see who's up, and I'd be right there. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to get you. I'll get you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. It was friendly. Okay, it was friendly. That rivalry. That yeah. friendly rivalry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. You know, we're still friends to this day. Love him like a brother. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I would always get house. The fire did it. I'm yes. telling you. Yeah. Well, let me, let, while, while, while we go, let, let me just go back, and I got a question I ask you. I want to ask you. This. So, in the bar case, who was your most friendliest person, your most least friendliest person, or who's the person that you really just couldn't work with? Uh, uh, or who had the biggest ego? Harvey had the biggest ego, mm -hmm. and I don't know why. Uh, to me, and Harvey played what instrument? He played saxophone. Mm -hmm. Okay. The uh, thing about it is, he was tone deaf. <laughs> so, you know, you'd spend 30 minutes trying to tune your horn and you don't know whether you're flat or sharp. It's like, how can you be a musician and you're tone deaf? Wait a minute. <laughs> Who was it? Oh, okay. He was arrogant. Once he put on the wig, mm -hmm. he became this other person that, you know, stood tall and, he's, what? You know, <laughs> uh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody else was basically cool. You know, I, Scoop was a little outside. We called him Charles Allen. His nickname was Scoop. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a little outside. You know, it, he liked Angel Dust. Okay? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So you, you yeah. Know, mind all Dr drugs. Either. Drugs were big back then, pretty much. They right. were, but they weren't. Okay. You know, either you did them, or you did a little, or you did too much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of Parliament, Dennis was the only. Did, the drummer. Mm -hmm. Dennis Chambers was the only one that I knew did absolutely nothing. Right. All the rest of them, you know, some of them got paid in cocaine. Right. You know, very little money you mm -hmm. saw. You mm -hmm. saw a lot of drugs. You know, George would, they go in one by one. George would break them off, you know, an eighth. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you did good to that. Did you, yeah, okay, you get a little extra. I'm mm -hmm. thinking. Uh, I need my money. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the reason why I never really got strung out. Mm -hmm. Okay, first mm -hmm. of all, I don't like needles. Right. I don't like taking pills. You know, so it's like, well, okay, marijuana. Okay, it's not as good as it is now. So, but you know, you still party a little, little bit. Right. You know, I like money in my pocket, like I said. So, I, cocaine, no. Uh, it's free base, just now crack. Okay, I did that once or twice, and you know, I went to lay down. Me and Uncle Charlie. Mm -hmm. True story. Now, Uncle Charlie. So people don't Uncle Charlie. Who's Uncle Charlie? 
Everybody knows Uncle Charlie. Well, Charlie Wilson, the well, Gap Band. Yes, yeah, so, but some people don't know, so we want to make sure okay. that we know talk about it. Well, yeah, he, he has seriously changed now. I'm talking right. back in the day, yeah. in the 80s, okay? Man, Charlie came by after the show. <laughs> we had got an eighth, cooked it up, looked like a big old almond. Like, man, you want to smoke this? You want to smoke this? I'm like, well, okay, okay, let's go. Ah, <sighs> okay, so you realize you have to play tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You're up all night. Okay, now all of a sudden the sun come up. You have to get on the bus. I didn't sleep all night. Put my head to the pillow. I'm listening to my heart. Right. It stopped. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> Brrr, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Drugs is, uh, is what did Rick James? Drugs is what did he say? Well, we, we, it's a we, powerful we, thing. He's on the Dave Chappelle show. Yeah, Dave yeah, yeah, Chappelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Powerful drug. Oh. Ter terrible thing. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so my experiment with that was short lived. Mm -hmm. I like money in my pocket. You know, the, the guys would spend their paycheck and then get back home mm -hmm. Sunday, Monday afternoon. You know, didn't have anything to show for their work. Wow. You know, then have to come back to the group and borrow money to pay their bills. It's like, well, wait a minute. I'm not doing that. Why don't I get a stipend if you're paying their bills because they've smoked up all their money or did all their money in whatever drug of right. choice that, or drinking. There wasn't that much drinking going right. on. You know, and then you're getting paid. Well, then I should get double. You know, I'm not, I'm being responsible right. at my young age, you know, come on. And you were, how old were you, were you like 19 then or 20? No, 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 I was in my, uh, probably 24, 25, yeah, mm -hmm. 20, yeah, I was mid-20s, okay, mm -hmm. and if people would interview me, you know, I would always tell them, you know, hey, don't do drugs, mm -hmm. even though, you know, I'm over here smoking, you know, maybe two or three hits of a joint before I went on stage just to take the edge off, not to get high, okay? Mm -hmm. That was not my intent. Take, take your jitters. Yeah, take okay. the jitters mm -hmm. out, you know, because once you get on stage, they say your name, the lights come up, you know, and you get that rush in yeah. the people. Uh -huh. It's like, Brrr! it's yeah. like, okay. Heart, <sighs> heart beating fast. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you know, yeah. one, two, three, blooms, okay, and then it's on. Mm -hmm. You know, for the next, when we first started, it was 18 minutes. And we were lucky to get 18 minutes, not an hour, 55 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes. You know, that was the headliner. Mm -hmm. 18 minutes. If you went over, true story, if you went over, they would cut the power to the PA system and turn up the house lights. I was there, went through it. Rufus, Shaka Khan, we were the opening act. 18 minutes, 18 minutes, 30 seconds, click, and we was kicking butt, do you hear me? Mm -hmm. Click, the sound got cut in half, you know, you go from, ah, to, uh, the house lights came on, everybody's looking around, what, what? Get off the stage. Okay, got another gig with y'all? Okay, mm -hmm. let's go back. Okay, 18 minutes, let's cut three minutes out the show and burn them again. There's a lot of rivalry with oh, yeah. the bands. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, some, you know, are rivals. Some, you know, your friends. You know, but when you're on stage, you're doing your thing, you know. You're doing your job. Either yeah. you get house or you don't. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that simple. Uh, I can remember touring with Lakeside. They always got house. You know, Fred, that's my boy. He's still playing. Fred drums. Alexander, yes. Fred Alexander. Mm -hmm. He's still playing. You know, they still touring. That's my cat. We didn't have any beef with them. It's like, hey, come on. Brick from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't know that we used to tour with Brick. They got real high. Mm -hmm. They were Angel Dust and mm -hmm. Knibber and all. And it's like, man, I tried that one time. Mm -hmm. Angel Dust. Mm -hmm. I was high the next day and I was so scared because it's like, I have to play and I'm not in my right mind. I never did it again. Right. Okay? Right, it's right. like, man, don't, it's. it's it's not worth your livelihood mm -hmm. to be on stage. You know, I can remember back in the day, the bass player for the Commodores, he simply did not show up for the gig. He's in his room, free basin. Wow. 
And it's like, well, now wait a minute. You ought to know something's wrong when this is taking over your life and your livelihood. Don't do drugs. You know, especially you young people out there. Don't do it yet. You got time. Learn your craft. Learn it well. Learn it good. Play from the heart. Play what you know. You know, you get high later. You'll be all right. You know. Let me, let me ask you this. Who would you be your top funk drummers in your era? coming up from the groups besides yourself. <laughs> yeah, I was getting ready to say, uh, you know, I can't think of too many. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, Larry Blackman, you know, I still give you your props. Larry Blackman was good, but he was an East Coast style so he didn't play that New York, that, that New York, yeah, that yeah, New York yeah, thing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he didn't necessarily play as hard. Right. But you know he was in he was in pocket. You know Dennis Chambers. Mm -hmm. He played hard, mm -hmm. and he was in pocket. Right. You know I'm trying to think. Uh, Blake side drummer, yeah, Fred. Mm -hmm. He's always in pocket. Mm -hmm. your, you know your your pocket has to be big enough for everyone to fit in. Get in where you fit in. Mm -hmm. Here's the pocket. Here's the tempo. Here's what's going on. Mm -hmm. Come on in. Okay, mm -hmm. all are welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, you, uh, Steve Gadd. Yeah. Tasty drummer. Yes. He's Tower of Power. Mm -hmm. Tasty drummer. He didn't overplay. Uh, but he, he had a good pocket. And he also went and played with Bob James and a lot of other people yeah, too. Right, yeah, right, right. What, so, what about Roger Parker from Faiso, Breaking in the Funk? <laughs> <laughs> Haven't talked to him in a long time. He was good too. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's a drummer here, I forget. Uh, uh, his name, uh, his name, Timmy Halp. Mm -hmm. He played drums for, uh, uh, I think, the band from England or something. Uh, Boogie Nights. Oh, that's that's Bilbo. 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 That's Bilbo. He, the original drummer for Heat Wave, Bilbo. Heat Wave. Yes, okay, yes. so Timmy came in because he was doing that mm -hmm. for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, oh, okay. You, the rock, shake. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you got a little something, something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's so many drummers out there. Yeah, that's what I'm getting ready to say. Yeah, you know, so many drummers. Everybody had a different style. Pocket wise, uh, Diamond. Uh, Diamond was cool. He he had a tendency to rush. You know, sit with it. You don't have to. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. don't be chronic. Uh, as we're talking, I was trying to think of uh, Jelly Bean. From the time. You know, from the time. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay. This filthy, this yes. filthy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Always yeah. on time, always yeah. in pockets. Yeah. You know, I, I'll give him that. Mm -hmm. You know, I can remember uh, meeting James Brown. You know, it's, it's famous people you meet. Mm -hmm. it's like, man, I'm meeting James Brown. He was backstage in his dressing room putting on all this tons of makeup like he did every show. You know, it's like, well, Dad, James Brown, and he still carried two drummers. At, you know, so you there was no break in the show, mm -hmm. and if you broke tempo or you sped up or something, if James spun around and did this to you, oh, that's ten dollars out of your pay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he'll go, oh, that's twenty five dollars. Don't mess up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of strictness. Uh, I went to see him in the East St. Louis. Best show ever, James Brown. Mm -hmm. God rest his soul. Mm -hmm. You know, I can remember meeting Stevie Wonder, and I'm thinking, this boy ain't God, he can see. You mm -hmm. know, he was, he was in the studio, right. you know. Right. We came up in the control room, mm -hmm. he was out on the floor playing uh, some parts for the Pointer Sisters. Right. He came in and then immediately knew somebody was there, you know, and oh, this is the park. Oh, hey, how y'all doing? He walked around and sat down. I'm telling you, it's like... He, you ain't blind. You know each fader. Oh, yes. I never yeah. will forget that. Yeah. Sly and the Family Stone. Mm -hmm. Sly. We walked in on him. Cut the tape immediately. He wouldn't let anybody hear nothing until it was put out. Right. You know, he was sitting there with the guitar in his hand, even though he played keyboards. He's sitting there with the guitar in his hand. What y'all want? 
Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, nice to meet you. Uh -huh. Okay, <laughs> get out. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, okay, at least I met Sly. <laughs> you know well, let's, what I mean? let's do this. Let's look at, let's let's talk about the music industry, the business. Oh boy. Okay. And let's 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 give like a brief overview of that if you can. And and why young people need to know about music, how the music industry can to, can break you or make you. And what what's your thoughts on that? Ooh. You're really talking about the business aspect. Yes. And you know, you have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. Because Ignorance truly is bliss, mm -hmm. you know, nine-tenths of the law, whatever, however you want to say it. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, mm -hmm. they're not ab obligated, you know, to tell you anything. Oh, yeah, you're going to get some money. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's coming. In the meantime, the money's already there. They're trying to get as much as they, oh, okay, so maybe he can handle, uh, back in the day, okay, maybe he can handle, you know, 2500 three grand. maybe he can handle that. Ah, uh, well, what do you, ah, uh, well, let's see. Okay, some of us are responsible. Some of us aren't. You know, back in the day, you could be on the telephone talking long distance and you get that phone bill and it's like two, three hundred dollars. Not, oh, um, it's, uh, uh, talk in Texas for as long as you want. Oh, no, 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 no. Mall Bell got their money. Okay? Uh, it's important that you own your music. Whether you go, it's important that you join either BMI, that's usually for musicians, ASCAP is usually for singers. Sometimes you can belong to both. You know, they're going to pay you basically equal. Mm -hmm. Make sure uh, you can have a production company where you're the owner, or you could be part owners with your business partner. Mm -hmm. um, um, there's one other thing, you, you're, uh, you're publishing, mm -hmm. that is so very, very important. Because it's 50%, it's 100%, but each of them have 50 for here, 50 for there, 50 right? there, or 20 for here, and you make sure that you hold on to your publishing, because you never know, 50 years later, you know, your song comes around and it's big again. Yes. You know, if you own your publishing rights, then you're going to get paid. A lot of the rappers sample you gentlemen. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you know, it's like I think there's a, some eight seconds or something, maybe six seconds now, you know, where they you should get credit, but a lot of them don't, you know, they sample and then speed it up or, you know, add just enough to where unless you are really on top of your own music, mm -hmm. you won't know. Right. You know what I mean? Um, there's some musicians, you know, that have just flat out just take a piece but by the time they get finished with the song that they're working on, unless you know, you, you, you don't know. Bruno Mars, the last album he put out, you know, I'm listening to it for the first time. I'm like, well, hold up, that's Bar K's. Hold up, that's the time. Hold up, that's, uh, uh, what's the three uh, from uh, the three uh, Shalimar? That's Shalimar all day long. Come on, man. But you're getting paid like it's yours. Right. People, musicians, singers, if you're a writer, make sure that you're all your ducks are in a row before anybody hears your stuff. This day and age, you, you, your phone is on record. Mm -hmm. Then just take your stuff. It's not out yet. Oh, let me borrow that. Mm -hmm. Let me get paid before you get paid. Mm -hmm. Okay? I, oh. Don't get me started because I'm going to get angry. <laughs> I There's some things that happen. I should be living in a gated community. You know, but I'm grateful for what I have. But I could have had more. Had I known certain members of the Barcays who are not even in the Barcays anymore, I'm not going to name names, but you know who you are. Oh, well, just sign this. We'll give you 2500 Well, my phone bill was 15 so I'm only getting a grand, and I'm signing half my life away not realizing. Well, will I still get my BMI check? Oh, yeah, you'll get that. Well, BMI is nothing compared to what you're trying to, oh, <clears throat> okay, keep your publishing. Okay, let me just tell you that. Keep your publishing. Okay, next question. Well, let's, uh, let's so, uh, get mad. <laughs> Go ahead. Grab, grab your drum. Tell us about that drum head right there. Yeah. Tell us about your little drum head right there. <laughs> this old thing. Yeah, yeah. Turn it around so we can see it. In the, in the right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what does the writing say? Uh, okay, so you have to remember it's November. 
Okay, so it got dark early. Okay, so I wrote down it was done on an old, dusty, cold, dark night in the band room of East High School. Wow. This is the first drum head that I ever busted. Bring that, bring that to, to, to the camera, just a little bit to the camera so we can see just a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. R.I.P. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I see. Okay. 11-2, 1971. Wow, that's a you beautiful I mean? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, that was the beginning. I didn't really break... Well, no, I break heads. I broke sticks more than heads. Mm -hmm. You know, but I, eh, occasionally, you know, something would come up from the rim, uh -huh. you know, because I'd have my rim... This head so tight, you know, right. you get that crisp yeah, that, sound. Yeah, that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Ah, I see, yeah. And I see right behind you have your drum bag. Can you can you grab that if you possible? Oh, yeah. yeah. This, is this is this your tour bag back in the this day? This is my tour bag back in the day. I still use it. You know, I still got you know stickers from, I guess when Tom Joyner. Oh yes. Uh, yeah. We played with the Sunset Symphony as yes, Tom Joyner. That's 2011. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sunset Symphony, that's a Memphis, it's a Memphis thing where the Barcades played with uh, the, the Symphony, uh, yeah. Memphis Symphony Orchestra. Yeah. Did a whole set, you know, it was nice outside before COVID. Place was packed, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but going back to, I'll just show you this because mm -hmm. I still keep them. What used to be my flame sticks. Wow. Okay. Same sticks, they still got a little burn mark at the edge. Uh -huh. You know, I can't tell you what I soaked them in, you know, and they'd be sitting behind me. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> but I know some drummers, they would take paper towel and wrap around just like a regular stick. Uh -huh. Wrap the paper towel around it, rubber band, click, 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 soak it in gasoline. Gasoline. Wrong move. Don't do that. Dude, what what you soak <laughs> here is alcohol? I can't tell you. Not the magic, not the magic. Yeah, hair. Like, with the flame throwing, with the flame throwing stuff. <laughs> if I tell you, I gotta kill you. I'll get a secret. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, they would gasoline. Duh. As soon as you hit your head, boop. <laughs> it would burn. Your sticks go right through. Right. Oh, you were done playing for the night. <laughs> a lot of the guys use the flame thrower, the uh, flame swallowing stuff. Uh, wrap that around you. You used to do, do some stuff back in the day too. Uh, well, yeah, you know, you, you get some more fifty one rum. You can do that. <laughs> yeah. and just don't swallow. Don't swallow. It. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. <laughs> well, you know what? Like, like I said, Michael, this is a great honor for coming in your home. Uh, I mean, this is telling the stories, man. You are a living legend. I appreciate it. You know, it's it's been my honor. Uh, it's been my pleasure. I am humbled. Uh, we could talk for hours, trust yes. me. But you know, I I, I need to keep it uh, not R. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got stories. Woo. Yes, yes. Well, it's okay. It's well, okay. Well, any final words to the funk fans out there that you can say? You know, some positive words you can tell them, and you supporting. The, the Funk Music Hall of Fame exhibition in Dayton, Ohio, and how important is that organization for funk people? Well, I, you know, I, I think it's, uh, it's interesting that we have a funk-specific Hall of Fame uh, and what funk represents mm -hmm. uh, before rap and hip-hop, you know, that was the genre, uh, the go-to. You, you know, you still had your R&B. We're in the R&B Hall of Fame, by the way, in Tuscaloosa. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm happy that this is right down the street mm -hmm. so I can go at any given time because mm -hmm. I do want to uh, give my snare mm -hmm. uh, and I'll drive down and, and donate it. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a maybe an outfit or two that I have mm -hmm. that I can donate. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's important that we keep this alive so uh, I would just say you know keep funk alive yeah and know? then we want you to come with our young people when we have our master series classes you can you know like drum clinics and stuff and talk about oh, we no would love you to come down no problem I, you, it's basic but it's important as long as you can keep that groove you know I back in the day when we cut uh, traffic jammer you can go back and listen to it 
I held perfect tempo for 7 minutes and 22 seconds. I should have sent it to Guinness Book of World Records just to see, you know, did anybody else, you know, not uh, groups like Yes, where you, you your song is 20 minutes, but you're changing time signatures. No, this was one group, seven minutes. There was no drum track in my ear. No, there's, I was in a zone that day, seven minutes. Try to play a 2-4 stomp for seven minutes and not vary your, your, your tempo. It's more difficult than you think. Okay. Keep funk alive, man. Thank Keep you. playing. Keep Thank doing you. your thing, young people. Thank you. You'll get recognized. Thank you. Well, this is David Webb, host of the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center's award-winning show, Funk Chronicles, on location with the great who? Michael Beard. In Columbus, Ohio. Until next time, everybody. Let's keep it funky. You right about that. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs>